subscribe to the fullbetterenglish.com. It's completely free open source, uh, online thesaurus, which generates results based on the core curriculum you have in the search engine. Um, I'll talk about Web Bootcat at the end if we have time, but it allows you to make your own database from student essays. You can also crawl data from the internet to collect the uh, collect. So, I thought we could do a little investigation. Um, I thought it would be interesting if we could um, together look at how the English word enjoy behaves in the language. So what does the word enjoy mean? What grammatical patterns does it occur in most commonly? And what collocations does it have? So collocations would be words that commonly occur um, more commonly than, more statistically um, than they would occur by chance. This is the sketch engine. I've zoomed in on the top right hand corner. And it, it's, it's not put up on the page, it's just zoomed in. Um, so the first thing you want to do is pick the database that you're interested in. Um, in this, I'm going to look at the N101012 corpus. It's a corpus of English. It was web crawled in 12 days and it's got 12 billion words in it. <laughs> so we'll look at the concordance first. The option when you click on concordance on the top left is to um, select your query type and type in your query. So this is essentially the database search engine. This is searching the body of the language. So a simple query type is the default type, default query in the sketch engine, and it will match the query and the lemma. What that means is if you type in enjoy, it will match enjoy, enjoys, enjoyed, enjoying. It will match all forms of the root of the query. When you click on make concordance, this is what you'll see. So in the N1010 corpus, there are 3,116,000 instances of the word enjoy. Um, there are 20 results on each page and 155,000 pages of results, which is great. But it's way, way too much information to go through and analyse. So, on the left-hand side, you can um, thin, down, um, thin down the information, so you can sample the information. So when you click sample, um, the sketch engine, you can specify how many lines, how many instances that you want to see. Um, and it takes a random sample, so it's not biased in any way. It won't collect all of the enjoyed or all of the enjoying, it'll take a random sample. Then when you create your sample, um, you'll see the concordance line again, um, except you'll see that it's been sampled to 100, and this time you've got five pages of the words. So, that's great, but we can do more. We can sort those concordance lines based on the words that either precede our query or follow our query. So, I'm going to show you what we can do when we sort the context on the right. So, in the sketch engine, you'll see any um, grammar or any sort of non-alphabetical tokens will come first. And then, from the right-hand side, everything will be listed in alphabetical order. There are other ways you can sample it, but this is a sort it, but this is just a quick, quick explanation. So, um, maybe I didn't leave that one long enough. Did you spot any um, teams? So we'll show that again. Sorting the word enjoy with its context to the right, can you spot any patterns about how the word enjoy is used? So, what do we enjoy? Uh, sorry, I'll just go back. So, we can see um, continental breakfast, fine dining, um, what else can we see? Snack. So, we enjoy breakfast, dining, and snacks. So, the object of enjoy is often a meal. So, if we scroll down looking at that concordance, we can find more patterns. What is a furry friend? So on the fourth concordance line on the left, say for dog bones for your furry friend to enjoy, um, it would be 
for a learner of English, perhaps may be a bit confusing, so you might want to find out what furry friend is. Um, if there's something in the context that you don't understand, simply click on the instance and it will expand the context. So I'll show you that now. Um, yeah, two mistakes. Being cut off at the bottom of the context. Yeah. There we go. So I don't know what very friend is, so I've clicked on enjoy it's in that line and it's popped up the context at the bottom so I can read more. You can also, if you need more context, you can expand the context to the left and expand the context to the right as well. Uh, also it says in the extra bit of context at the bottom that it refers to a, a dog bone as a treat and we know that with snacks, breakfasts and other things, trees are things that we enjoy. Uh, I'm going to show you Word Sketch. This is also in the leaflet. Word Sketch is a brilliant tool if you've got two words that are similar, but you want to differentiate them. So if you've got sort of two synonyms and you want to know. No, sorry, that sketch here, sorry, Word Sketch is one page summary of a word's grammatical and collocation. So I've clicked on Word Sketch on the left, typed in Enjoy, and select Create Word List, and this is what pops up. So it lists the words in multiple categories. So based on the data in the corpus, when Enjoy is a verb, the most common objects are view, benefit, meal, ride, etc. When Enjoy is used as a verb, the most common subjects uh, would be guest, anyone, the apostrophe double L, which I would guess is that enjoy is used a lot in future tense. And for example, if it's used in an and or phrase, you've got relax, unwind, appreciate, etc. Um, we can also cluster uh, the objects or any of those things in the word sketch. So this is what we'll see. Basically, it just makes it, it, it kind of condenses the information down more to make it easier to digest. Just giving a brief, quick overview of words behaviour. So we have to enjoy views, benefits, meals, rides. So what's the main things we enjoy? If you've got the word sketch, you can also scroll down by putting it on the screen. It will show um, you know, if you want to do perhaps um, an in-depth linguistic study, you've got all the other parts of speech that are equally important but often backgrounded um, when you're beginning to learn the language. Patterns, so I'll just go back. Here we've got uh, the ING complementizer and um, hike here, um, that's quite interesting. So let's say I'm, I'm interested in something, I want to click on it to get a bit more information. Just click on the link and it will show enjoy with the word that you're interested in in the performance. The store entry form, um, as I said, the sketch engine is used um, at another website called formatterenglish.com. We should try it if it's quite good, but it's based on our thesaurus. Um, this is what we've called a distributional thesaurus. So, I'll just show you how. If you type in your lemma, which is your root of, of the word, so for that we'll hike, hiking, hiked, etc. Um, and specify the part of speech and click show similar words. This will come up. Um, as I say, we've called it a distributional thesaurus because the words that are in that list are in that list because they occur with words that commonly occur with pike. So this is, system is used in the IELTS Cambridge English language testing to um, not to for gap fill exercises. So if you're actually looking for hike, you could select you know uh, track camp and um, any of those other words as a gap fill. And it's 
that they're all likely candidates for the gap fill because they all behave in a, group, in a similar way grammatically to the word hike, although they might be incorrect in a specific context. Um, yeah, so the words in that list share the most collocates with the target word. I'm now going to show you the sketch uh, diff, which you can get to either by clicking on sketch, sketch diff on the left, or by clicking on any of these words in the distribution of the source. Hello. So, so, so can you create a gap fill instead of the same? You can create a gap fill. Is that what you're saying? Um, you, you can't do that in the sketch engine. Okay, okay. However, what you can do is um, you could you know, sort of copy and paste the data and make your own exercises. Although the actual system for gap fill is something that IELTS have developed themselves, but they just want the language data. For their own project. So that's what they're doing. So they create results based on sketch. Yes. Okay. okay. Um, it's used in other gap filler testing um, applications that are online but less well known. So we've got one of my colleagues has developed a TED Club. I think it's T E D C L O W G, TED Club, or it's either got 2D or 2G. And that's, that generates a gap filler. So, um, yes, distributional thesaurus grandfather. Okay, so I'm thinking, right, they're all nouns, they're all family members, but why are they different? The, why are the words different? So I click on grandmother, and I can compare grandmother and grandfather, and this is exactly what you've got in your leaflet with the clever and intelligent. Um, so the things shown in red are what grandmothers do, things shown in green are what grandfathers do, and the things in the middle are what they do. Um, so, grandmothers sew, crochet, remarry, and grandfathers fight, flee, farm, molest. This is based on, <laughs> we're not saying that this is what happens, this is looking at billions of words of data that have been collected from news websites, have been collected from academic writing, have been collected from um, investigations. Um, so. Which are you running this over? N101012. It's the big web crawl. It's the big web crawl okay. corpus. But if I've got time at the end, um, I can demo any of the corpus for you. Or you can, you can access them. Yeah. 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 If I have a my body page, can I use <coughs> it? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think this is a lot more user friendly than the matrix. Yeah. Okay. You can really easily, uh, maybe we can talk over coffee yeah. a bit. Um, if you, is it a text, is it a Word document, Microsoft Word, or? It will be eventually. <laughs> yeah. so, so, it's, so whatever, whatever format it's in, it could be in, um, what, what's it called, where you've got, you've got the black screen on the computer and you type in, in the white text and all the developers use it. Um, you, you can take data in that form and put it in the sketch and it makes you like HTML. Yeah, like HTML. Um, what teachers do if they want to put um, their students' essays in, simple copy-paste from Word into Notepad, yeah. save as a plain text format and upload. So it takes 30 seconds. Yeah. Um, yeah, if I've got time, I'll, well, I might be able to demo it by the time, so we can talk. Yeah. Um, again, objects, when, you know, grandmother is used, um, what, what words does it occur with which objects, etc. Um, and here's more about what they do, what they are. So, corpora. Your cor our corpora is sketch engine, corpora on the internet, your corpora. Um, you can use any corpora. Um, when you come onto the home screen, um, we've, you've got an option to select lots of different corpora. Uh, I'll just scroll it over so we've got those corpora and two more this the, the short list of what is it nine corpora at the top they're only there because they're ac accessed frequently by Adam Kilgallen who is this, this is his company in his account so he must have done something with the Bulgarian NC2 web corpus and that's why it's at the top so they might not necessarily be in the top for you it just makes it quick and easy for you to access the most recent corpora. Um, corpora at the bottom, 
he's made a corpus about Chinese wine, and he's made a corpus about um, chemistry in traditional Chinese, um, 3 million words and 400,000 words, um, yeah, you, whatever project. It's good for English for specific purposes as well, if you've got someone wanting to learn about engineering or medicine or, or anything. Um, it's easy, you can crawl for specialised um, uh, texts from the web, you can put them in your corpus and query them, or if you've done essays, you can upload them and query them in the tools. Uh, web bootcamp, web crawling tool. <coughs> um, just to give you a bit of uh, context, the British National Corpus is a corpus of not quite sure how many words. It's a big corpus. Um, a hundred, it's a hundred million. Yeah, it's split. It's split. Yeah, ten percent spoken, ninety percent written text. So it's collected. Um, one million words. Sorry. One hundred million words were collected over ten years. We collected 12 billion words in 12 days. That's how fast it is. Um, as I said, when you're building your own corpora, students or yourselves can work on a topic close to your heart, so um, any interests that you have for an assignment. I, I made a corpora, I made a corpora just about music to see if there were any music terms that I didn't know. Um, yeah, sketch into Dr. Ritty then. Um, that should say 90 day free trial. If you go to Sketch Engine, click on register, click on Site Assets Member, and enter the Site Assets key, you'll have 90 days to have a go on the tool. Um, and I've made more, uh, I've made more Sketch Engine accounts than there are attendees to this conference, so feel free to disseminate uh, the, the, the key if you think you, any colleagues might be interested. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. The YouTube actually is um, online, it's, it's screenshot videos. Is there a technical word for screenshot video? I, I film what's on the screen and I talk people through how to use the recorders so and how to use screencast. screencast. That's the one. Um, yeah, so there are a few videos on there at the moment um, talking people through how to use each function. I mean, the videos are just a, a, an add on to make everything kind of. Um, easier for the user. Every, all of your questions will be answered in the help pages, but it's you know, boring to read through reams and reams and reams and reams of help pages. So the video is about one minute long, just refreshing. Um, yeah, the functions. So, do we have time for questions? We have time for a couple of questions, uh, but thank you very much for reading mm -hmm. that. Was Yeah. I know you've had a very interesting interface since 